so far, I don't have the exact number of the casualties and the matters, but uh, if we say there are more than 50, the, the ones that were killed by the Nigerian army, I don't think I'm exaggerating. And we have more than 200 people that were, that are now injured, majority of them carrying bullet wounds. That's really what happened. And after that, our brothers turned back to where they come from. Yet the soldiers follow them, shooting, as if they're in a battlefield. So we really don't know. The government is waging a war on the Shia community. We want to know why. Why is the Nigerian army being used against its own citizens? The reasons after the killing on Saturday was we are going to ambush the Nigerian army and take their weapons. Okay, what is the reason today for the attack, for this shameful and cowardly attack? What is the reason? We want to know. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily, coming to you live from our Abuja studio. I have with me uh, to discuss some of the pertinent issues surrounding the recent clashes between uh, the Shiites uh, and the uh, Nigerian military, um, a retired group captain of the Nigerian Air Force and a security consultant, Mr. Sadiq Shehu. You're very welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much, Ajuri. So it's a troublesome scenario playing out in the country today, uh, particularly in Abuja. And I want to ask you, what is your assessment of what you have seen so far uh, as it relates to these clashes between the Shiites and the Nigerian military? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for me, as a security consultant, and not only for me, for all people that are interested in the sanctity of human life, the first and foremost issue is the we while guaranteeing the right of uh, public protest on the one hand, and also the right, or rather the responsibility of the government to maintain law and order, we have to do it in such a way that the uh, unfortunate loss of human lives can be reduced or eliminated. Maybe not eliminated, but reduced. Uh, so I think it is based on that uh, premise that I wish to join uh, this debate. When you look at it, certainly the Constitution and other international human rights instruments have guaranteed not only the IMN or IPOM or any other group or even an individual who will feel aggrieved by an action or some policy by a government to peaceful protest. I emphasize the word peaceful. Mm. Nigeria is a signatory. Even our domestic laws have agreed. There are so many case laws in our courts that have agreed to that right to peaceful demonstration. And in Nigeria, we have seen it, you know, uh, exercised by political parties, by people who will say they are troublemakers like IMN and YPOP. We have also seen it recently being used by who we could call very reasonable citizens, like members of the National Assembly. So whoever, ev whatever you are, whatever you stand for, uh, the Constitution and international human rights uh, instruments guarantees you that right. On the other hand, the government have a right to maintain law and order to ensure that what starts as a peaceful protest remains as a peaceful protest. It has also the right where a peaceful protest, as often happens, degenerates into a violent protest. The government has the right to intervene, to maintain law and order, to even protect the people that are protesting, because you could have a counter-protest. If one group is protesting, another group could have a counter-protest. So the bottom line is that you will have loss of lives. You also have the right to see even if a peaceful protest starts and then along the way it could be hijacked. Because one issue that people forget, even in a peaceful protest in the same group, not all people will behave the same. Some will go along the, you know, what is decided. We want to show our displeasure and that's all. But there are always elements. So a peaceful protest, again, is not a homogeneous entity. That is exactly yeah. where I was going next. Yeah. Uh, it, when you look at the kinds of mass protests that we've seen in this country, particularly uh, the ones conducted by the Shiites, you notice that it, the, the, the population of the protest is quite large. And when, if you have one or two or three miscreants within a midst of so many people, how do you think the Nigerian security agencies could potentially, uh, you know, kind of 
minimized the, the impact that those few miscreants would have on the larger protest without, you know, essentially trying to curtail the entire protest, most of which may be peaceful. It is a difficult uh, situation. However, in all honesty, societies that are advanced more than ours, in everything you have specialists, you have specialized training. You know, the training we have for law and order, for law enforcement, has made adequate provisions for such a situation where largely the group is peaceful, but you have some miscreants. So that is why it, pro it prohibits, for example, shooting into a, a, a mass crowd that is protesting. Because it is recognized that within that gym, there are people who are democratically you know, expressing their freedom of uh, association or assembly, and then there are the human elements. Of course, it is difficult, like I said, to pinpoint, but even within uh, military or police tactics, there are ways to pick some certain people you know, who are troublemakers and they give them a different treatment while, if possible, allowing the other majority who want to do peaceful protest to go on with their, with their activities. Yeah, but some critics have alleged that, you know, when you look at the, the kind of the, the orientation of our military ac 